Hi fifth graders, it's Mrs. Nobby back for a virtual science lab. Today we're gonna review plant and animal cells. Now in the science lab, we use microscopes to look at those two different types of cells. Do you remember what we used for the plant cell? We looked at an onion skin. And for animal, we used ourselves. So before we review that, let's take a look at what this guy has to say about the differences, the three main differences between plant and animal cells. Both plant and animal cells have mitochondria, but only plant cells have chloroplast. This is the organelle responsible for photosynthesis, and of course, animals don't perform photosynthesis. Most energy for life on the planet comes from the sun through photosynthesis in the chloroplast. Both plant cells and animal cells have vacuoles. These are used for storage in the cell. However, only plant cells have a large central vacuole that contains mostly water. It's this central vacuole that gives plants their stability and turgor. Lastly, we have the cell wall. While both plant and animal cells have cell membranes, only plant cells have a cell wall. This cell wall gives plant cells their shape and structure. However, the cell wall does not regulate inflow and outflow of molecules. That's still the job of the cell membrane. Unfortunately, I didn't bring a microscope home from the science lab or slides, but I've made these gigantic slides just to remind you how we made the onion skin cell and the cheek cell. So imagine this was a slide. We sliced an onion. I guess I did that for you. And we found the skin, a little piece of the skin, one cell thick and we were able to put that on the slide we added a little bit of stain called iodine to the slide and that helped us be able to see all of the parts of the cell inside we put a cover slip on the top and put it under the microscope. Now the main thing we noticed between the onion skin and the plant, or the onion skin and the animal cell, was that the onion skin had a cell wall. It looked like a bunch of bricks stacked on top of each other. The cell wall provides support for the plant, such as in celery, if you break celery, you can see all of the what's called cellulose, which is not digestible to us, but that's what makes up the cell wall. It gives the cell shape. So in the plant cell, we can see the main differences, the things that we didn't see in the animal cell. We could see the cell wall. We could see that big vacuole it has in the middle that stores water and chloroplasts. Now remember in the science lab, you all were our samples of animal cells. We took samples from the inside of your cheek, we scraped it with the toothpick, and put it under the microscope. So we're gonna review with special guest star, Nicole. She's gonna review how we did that procedure. So the first thing we did was add a drop of water to our slide that's called a wet mount. Then she's gonna take the toothpick and swab or do a little scrape on the inside of her cheek. She's gonna take those cells and stir them around in the water. She's gonna lay the toothpick aside and then get some iodine to stain those parts of the cells so that we can see them better. It's always important to do a good stain on there. Just one drop. Okay, and then the, the cover slip goes on the top. And then we put it under the microscope and you could see those yellowish cells that were the animal cells. They had cell membranes, so they weren't rigid. They weren't the same shape as the onion cell. They were just little blobs under the microscope, little blobs of you. Part two of looking at cells in the science lab, we got to experience what it was like to look at a, pot, a drop of pond water under the microscope. So we're gonna pretend that this was the pond water. Let me quickly reenact some of your reactions to the pond water. 
because it was very, very stinky. So I collected pond water three weeks before we looked at it. I got some hay from the Tingle family. I fed it with the nutrients from the hay, let it fester, and it did smell. I agree with you that it did. So what we did was we took a drop of the pond water and we put it into what's called a depression slide. Now I brought a bowl as an example. I don't have a depression slide, but remember it was shaped like a bowl. We put the drop in so that the critters could still swim around under the microscope. And we saw things that were called protists. They can be one cell or multi-cell, but they are microscopic. You can only see them with a microscope. Now remember some of the creatures under the microscope that we thought we saw, those microscopic organisms included euglena, paramecium, some of you thought you saw hydra, there was algae, and even amoeba. I've enjoyed making this video for you. It's helped me remember all the fun times we've had in the science lab together over the years, for some of you since kindergarten even. I'll be back next time to show you me and Mrs. Miller planting a victory garden. Until then, bye fifth graders, I miss you.